Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm Ariel Chaisan, the second NASA intern. Uh, it's very nice to see everyone and be back home. Um, so yeah, I was part of the uh, International Internship Program at NASA, the NAS National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And NASA is actually home to the National Full Scale Aerodynamics Complex, or we call it NFAC. Uh, it houses the largest wind tunnel in the entire world. And my research was based on this wind tunnel. Uh, and I was very fortunate because uh, usually international people aren't even allowed to get anywhere near this wind tunnel. Uh, but my mentor was very adamant. He really wanted me to get the full experience of working at NASA. So it was, it was really interesting to be able to go into this complex. My research was an analysis of the effect of upstream blockages on a national full-scale aerodynamics complex 80 foot by 120 foot wind tunnel test section. And I'll explain what that all means to you now. So what is a wind tunnel? So we have these, basically it's a big tunnel where we put models, uh, any kind of objects, we want to test uh, aerodynamics over them. For example, in this 80 foot by 120 foot wind tunnel, things such as a space shuttle was tested. Uh, this is, uh, I think, a one-third scale model of the space shuttle. It's actually on display at Ames when you go in, when we have to drive in to get to where we stay. There's this one-third scale model of the space shuttle. This was actually tested in the 80 foot by 120 foot wind tunnel. And this, you can see, is the parachute that was attached to it. So when it lands, uh, this parachute is implemented. They tested this in, in the wind tunnel. This wind tunnel is run not just by NASA, but also by the Air Force. So it was really cool when I went there. I had a, a NASA badge as well as a badge from the Air Force that said that I can get into there. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, this is, I don't think you can see it really well, but this is the wind tunnel. It is extremely massive. Uh, it is, this test section is 120 feet wide and 80 feet high. Uh, I don't think I could describe to you how massive that is. As soon as you walk through there, it, it is just mind-numbing. Like, you can't even think about it. It is so huge. And the, there's, a, there's a big inlet. It is about 360 feet wide and 120 feet tall. And the cool thing about this wind tunnel is actually two wind tunnels in one. So there's the 80 foot by 120 foot wind tunnel. That is this whole big circuit here. And there's a smaller wind tunnel component, the 40 foot by 80 foot wind tunnel. And the major difference between them is obviously their size. And a test section of the 80 foot by 120 foot obviously experiences lower velocities than the 40 foot by 80 foot. But what I was interested in, what my project was interested in, was looking at the effect uh, that, we, that we see in the 80 foot by, one, by 120 foot. The main difference between them is that the 80 foot by 120 foot, we just call it the 80 by 120, it is an open circuit wind tunnel, meaning that it pulls in air from the atmosphere and from outside. There's these, these fans here that, that sucks in air from, from this direction here. And you can see them. These are really big as well. So I don't know if you can see this little man right here. Yeah. <laughs> That's how big it is. I, I, had the, I had the privilege of like standing in front of it and you can't, you can't understand it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fed of human engineering, really. So I think I have, if I want to try to explain it to you, this video might do a better job.
Due to the car driving. There are tremendous turning vanes in the shaft of the wind tunnel designed to straighten airflow. They are 12 stories high and 160 feet wide. Both wind tunnels are powered by the same bank of six electric 22,500 horsepower motors that were upgraded to provide a maximum airspeed of 345 miles per hour in the 40 by 80 foot test section and 115 miles per hour in the larger tunnel. These giant driver fans are so huge that it takes four persons to rotate one set of blades during an inspection before any aircraft can be tested. just how huge this wind tunnel is. Um, let me go back. Okay, so as I was describing to you before, the 80 foot by 120 foot wind tunnel is an open circuit wind tunnel. Uh, if you can see here, that's the inlet. It sucks in air coming from across the Pacific Ocean. So basically, when you stand in the test section of the wind tunnel, you can smell the ocean. And it's usually very cold inside there. So when we're doing testing inside there, uh, the Air Force and NASA, they're testing things like the space shuttle aircrafts that needs to carry human beings. They need to make sure they're safe. Uh, they need to test the, how the air flows around these vehicles. And what they don't want is that they don't want any sort of turbulence coming from outside, any sort of external atmospheric conditions affecting the testing that is going on right in here. So what they decided to do in 2014, they did some analysis. They created a 150 at scale model of this 80 foot by 120 foot wind tunnel. And they, they basically wanted to see what a worst case scenario would be uh, if, for example, there was a huge wall built in front of this wind tunnel. What sort of turbulence would we see in the test section uh, if something like that were to happen? Because uh, in, I think it was 1987, NASA issued an internal memo that stated that they don't want any, anything built anywhere near the inlet of this wind tunnel. Uh, and then in 2004, they said that, you know what, you can go ahead and build, but it has to be a certain height. Uh, and the Air Force now, they're really, really interested. Sometime in the future, who knows what could happen. There could be any sort of constructs that could, that could come up in here and affect the way that testing is to be done and that could affect negatively. Uh, it could be a lot more expensive to do testing. Testing might have to be done only at night. So they're really interested to see what would happen. Uh, let me go back. Yeah, this is the 150th scale model of the wind tunnel. They put it in the full scale wind tunnel and they put these big blockages in front of it. Uh, it's a funny story. They had the actual full scale wind tunnel and they put the 150th scale wind tunnel inside it and then they had a 3D printed 2500 scale model of the wind tunnel which they put inside the 150th scale wind tunnel. <laughs> and I think there's a picture of that somewhere but I couldn't find it, so. But yeah, so they put these blockages in front of this uh, smaller scale wind tunnel and they use these probes to measure the velocity of air in the model test sections. And from that, they can calculate what sort of turbulence they would be getting in the test section and effectively see if these blockages would affect how testing is to be done. Now, this testing that was done in 2014 was done to model uh, quiescent atmospheric conditions, that is, during the night when wind speeds coming into the inlet aren't as strong. Um, I was, my first project was dealing with this data from 2014. I had to go through and do some data analysis. Uh, basically write a data report, which I realized takes a lot of blood, sweat and tears. Uh, but it was interesting and hopefully maybe one day it could be published. And they wanted to do uh, a follow-up testing to this. So this was 2014 and now we're in 2018. They want to see what sort of turbulence we're going to get if there is high velocity winds coming into the inlet of the wind tunnel. So we had to, to simulate high velocity winds, we actually had to construct our own fans because a fan drive system that I showed you before, uh, they're actually not in operation right now. So the mechanical engineering students, they proposed, they built the, um, the fans and one really cool thing that happened while I was there is that they opened up the test section of the wind tunnel to put these fans in. And I remember that day, all of the interns were 
really excited. They were like, hey guys, look, they opened up the wind tunnel. And then obviously I had to, I had to interject every time and tell them that it was because of my project. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see, this is someone's head right here, but this is, this is massive. And I have a little video of them putting it in. I don't know if you can see it properly. But those are the fans there. And they have these huge cranes. Uh, the, the, the wind tunnel test section, it opens up wide. Uh, I think my mentor calls them the biggest doors in the world. And that crane, it lifts the fans into the test section uh, so that we can continue testing. So those are the fans. You can't really see it that well with the lights on, but yeah. Oh, look, there's a man here. So you, you can see how, how big it is. Yeah, so one, when we put this, the, the, this fans in here, uh, the mechanical engineering students had to uh, continue construction on it. Uh, and I usually just later on do nothing. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we had to put some sealant on top of here. That's why I'm lying on top there. Uh, these fans is actually two fans, uh, and we want to have one jet flow coming from them. But if we have these two fans, we're going to have two jets coming from them. So to to fix that, we had to put this mesh over the the two fan drive system, and we had to make sure that everywhere was sealed properly. And this was the fans. Uh, I don't, you can't really see the mesh here, but one time we were doing testing, we turned these fans on and the mesh blew off. It was kind of scary, but kind of fun. Yeah, so my part of the project was to, before we can actually put models in front of these fans and do actual testing, we have to analyze the, the flow coming from the fans. So we have this probe that we attach to a cart and we push this cart at various uh, distances from the fans, both laterally and vertically. And we take readings and I analyze them to see what type of effects we're gonna see. So that's the probe, it's called an ALNO probe. It's an ALNO nanometer probe. Uh, it is attached to, I don't know if you can see, yeah, there's the, that's a probe there. Uh, so the air comes down from these fans and there's a little sensor right here that detects the wind speeds and we collect that data and we plot graphs. Uh, one of the most interesting things I think that came from this data was seeing the recirculation effects in the test section of the wind tunnel. Basically, you see like a, uh, a periodicity almost when you plot the, the wind speeds over time. You see that there's a spike in velocity and a drop in velocity and a spike in velocity and drop. It's basically the air coming through these fans, recirculating and then coming back and then recirculating and coming back. Uh, I don't think anyone expected that at the office, but it was pretty interesting. Yeah, and I, as I mentioned before, it's really cold in the, in the uh, test section generally. So when these fans are on, I usually have to stand at the cart and press the button. And because it's so cold, we usually, me and my partner, we wear like three or four layers of clothes. <laughs> yeah, that's her there. And this is my office where I worked, uh, the Craft Air Mechanics branch. Uh, there's a loading bay somewhere right next to us. So every day when I when I walk to work, there was like these. There's a NASA plane right here, just perpetually parked up. It's the most fun thing to walk to see every morning. Uh, one time I was lucky enough to see a, a helicopter lift off. Yeah. So that was my really cool experience working at the National Full Scale Aerodynamics Complex at NASA.